agriculture. It's the economic engine that drives this region. On the next episode of Valley's Gold, we're heating up as we take a look at the pepper industry. From farm to fork, we're stuffing it all into this show. So join me, Ryan Jacobson, on this spicy adventure. Valley's Gold is produced through a partnership between the Fresno County Farm Bureau and Valley PBS. Production funding for Valley's Gold is provided by... Everyone enjoys getting together to laugh, to talk, and mostly to eat. It sounds so simple, but the reality is that it takes a lot of hard work to feed us. The next time you sit down to eat, remember to thank our farmers Gar Tutelian Incorporated since 1949 at 800-696-6108. The Myers Water Bank and Wildlife Project, a water resource and education program, providing an educational experience that teaches students in the Central Valley about water and wildlife. For more than 60 years, Brandt has been a major supplier of agricultural specialty products. Formerly Monterey Ag Resources, Brandt provides sustainable solutions for both conventional and organic growers. Brandt, we're proud to call the Valley home. I'm just outside of Fresno discussing bell peppers at Beloyan Farms. With me I have Yosh Kimini and Arturo Torres. Thanks for joining me guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you for coming out. I'm here to learn about this gorgeous California bell pepper, but let me begin with Beloyan Farms. You guys do much more than just bell peppers. Yes, we uh, we grow red onions, uh, leaf lettuce in the winter, uh, cauliflower, spinach, uh, zucchini squash, yellow squash, hard squash. Uh, just about everything you could think of. A lot of different vegetables. And also eggplants. And eggplants. And eggplants. Well, Beloyan Farms, it's a name I've known for many, many years, and your bell peppers are synonymous with some of the best quality. What makes these things so special? Well, everybody is consuming peppers now. Uh, there's an antioxidant uh, in the pepper itself, and that's our prime crop for our business. And when we talk about bell peppers, let's talk about the process to get them to where we see these full mature ones here. When do you plant them? In Fresno area, we plant around the 20th of April. 20th of April. Uh, we could go earlier, but we have Mettler uh, coming in starting end of May to 1st of June. So. And that's one thing that's so unique to the valley is the specialty that we're able to actually start down when you look at the southern Bakersfield area, Kern County down there, and you guys are able to move up with that process. So you're able to catch the, capture the first part of the market and have these things most of the summer, correct? Right. Uh, from Mettler, we come to Fresno West Side, and from Fresno West Side, we go to Hollister, and we also go to Oxnard. So how many, how many months of the year do you actually have bell peppers being uh, picked? We harvest uh, end of May all the way through mid-November mid uh, in this valley. Wow, and when I look at the bell pepper, first off, let's talk about the irrigation. I saw that you guys actually have drip tape out here for the, uh, for the feeding of the bell peppers. Right. And uh, it, it really helps with the uniformity and it makes the field look just spectacular and just really, really even. With a drip system, uh, everything you do is basically 100% efficient. Uh, you don't lose any fertility because everything is right at the root zone. And one thing I was noticing out here is that we do actually, bell peppers do have that little white flower. That flower is what matures into this big grown bell pepper here. How long from when the time you actually first see that flower to the time that you have a mature bell from pepper? From the flower 
to the pepper stage to where you can harvest, it's roughly around 45 days. 45 days. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And one thing that I think um, is so critical when it comes to these is that you, these are very sensitive to sunburn. And so you guys have to take a lot of precaution and care to make sure you you don't get to that stage. Correct. Uh, we have to make sure our plants, the foliage, has enough cover so there's no sunlight peeking through. Yeah. And pest. Pest and pest. diseases. What are the biggest pest and diseases uh, for bell peppers? Thrips, aphids, uh, stink bug, uh, worms, uh, basically everything. Everything that you yeah. would assume to be a vegetable yeah. crop. And also on the coastal region, uh, we fight powdery mildew. Great. Arturo, how do you know these bell peppers are ripe and ready to be harvested? And what does harvest consist of? Checking the plants, you know, when the red is ready, you know, seven, nine, ten days, depends on the weather. Yeah. Okay. When we look at a bell pepper like this, this is the right shape and size here? This is what you're looking for? Yeah, yeah. Depends, you know, the sizes, you know. Uh, are you picking off of color? Are you picking off of size or just a little bit of both? No, no, no. When the big, you know, chine, it's good, you know. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. It's a lot of smoke, you know, when same size, that is smoke, leave it there, you know, for the second round. Yeah, okay. And Yosh, the, the actual harvester that we see out in the field, takes a lot of employees out there that are actually, they're physically cutting these off of the vine? Uh, they're... Uh, Popping snapping it off. off, snapping them off, yeah. There's a little bit yeah. of an art to that because yeah. you don't want to damage this yeah. part up top here or else that makes it less. If you go against the curve of the stem, it will pop it, right it off. It comes right off. And then they're yeah. loading them onto buckets, which then goes onto the conveyor, onto the belt, conveyor belt for it then to end up. And yes. you guys are then going to dump those into bins Correct. in the field. And those bins then will be taken to the packing shed that we're going to check out here in just a little bit that will there will, there will be sorted and then packed into the consumer, what the right. consumer ultimately sees there. Correct. Well, great. Well, Arturo, Yosh, I appreciate you so much to give me a little bit more information about the California bell pepper. Now I'm off to see how these things are packaged. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you very Thank much. You. I've moved over to the Beloyan Farms packing facility, and with me I have owner Tim Beloyan and his daughter Emily. Thanks for joining me, guys. Well, we, we're out in the field and we got to see the bell peppers being harvested and we moved now over to where they're actually being processed. But Tim, let me begin with, you're the third generation owner, we have the fourth generation owner, and I've seen the fifth generation hauling around here. So right. tell me about your father and grandfather and how they started in the vegetable business. Okay. My grandfather was an immigrant from Armenia. He came to uh, Staten Island and farmed and eventually came to the San Joaquin Valley and farmed here. Uh, he became a farmer and a peddler and eventually became, uh, went into the wholesale business. Uh, it was called Charles Boyan Company. And then after, uh, at the end of World War II, my father and my uncle joined him in the business and they grew the business, the service wholesale business, the Charles Boyan Company. And then in the uh, mid 60s, my father started shipping produce from local growers. And uh, from that, we started farming ourselves to ensure consistency of product and quality and have more control of the product. And uh, we've kind of evolved into a farming marketing company now. Absolutely. And uh, one of the fun stories is, is my grandfather used to be one of the growers for your operation here. And Tim, now when we go indoors, what we saw as far as the actual processing, what does it take to process and pack a bell pepper? We take the peppers and uh, certain times of year we will wash them. This time of year we're not. We don't like to get water on the green peppers if we don't have to, but we'll brush them. We grade them, sort them, size them, and then make various packs. Some, some we place packs, some we put stickers on them, some we put in different types of boxes, some are RPC boxes, whatever the customer wants we, we can do. And you're sourcing peppers from throughout, not only the valley, but throughout the state, even the southwest region. Right, we start in Coachella Valley, we pack them down there, and then once we get north of Coachella Valley, everything that we grow comes to Fresno. So right now we have peppers coming from Arvin and Mettler, coming here, we pack them, uh, pre-cool them, cool them, process them to be shipped, and then ship them out of here. That way we control uh, the flow of product and we control the quality. We're sticklers on what we put in the box. Absolutely. Yeah. And when you talk about grading, I mean bell peppers, they're all based off of, you're looking at both size and color to go into the box? Uh, and, and mostly size, shape, uh, okay. if there's any defects, we, we, we take them out and put them in, in, in culls or for processing. We have several different grades that we make, so based on size and how they're packed. 
Absolutely. And the colors of peppers, there's a lot of different colors on the market today. Right. Is those different varieties or is that just different sun exposure? Uh, they're different varieties. Yeah. Different varieties. Yeah, they're different varieties, uh, although they all start green and then they eventually turn to a different color that you see in the package. Here. Okay. And one thing that's exciting here at Beloyan is you guys are always thinking of the greatest new products to come out. You have some new ones this year I know of, but you know, just overall, talk about some of those great products you put out. Well, we have some great people, first of all. It starts with our people. We have some great, innovative, creative people uh, that can take something that seems uh, like a squash, and they can take it and, and find a, a different way of preparing it or packaging it to make it more exciting to sell. And it's all about bringing more dollars back to the ranch, because we have to keep the ranch going. Without the ranch, none of this happens. So, like I say, we have some great people that can take uh, some great ideas to help market these products and, and stimulate more movement and bring more dollars to the ranch. And Emily, I want you to tell me about what's your favorite way to enjoy peppers. Our favorite way to enjoy peppers are just raw. My children love the mini sweets, and I'll just slice them up. Sometimes we'll cut them in half and dip them in ranch or hummus, and uh, it's a very healthy treat. And we also enjoy throwing them on the grill when we can get together with the family. We'll throw them on the, on the barbecue. The bread peppers, the bell peppers, um, mini sweets. And Tim, tell me about the people that make this operation happen. The people that make this operation happen are extraordinary. Uh, everybody here that works here is part of the family of Hawaiian Farms. We have people that have been here as long as 40, 45 years, and uh, I'm so thankful that they're here in our organization, and I'm so thankful for their creativity and their hard work and, and their honest efforts in making things happen. So much goes into putting up a box of produce. So much work and effort. You've seen it in the field, how hard it is to put up a good box of produce. I'm just so thankful for those people and their efforts. Tim, Emily, thank you guys so much for sharing a little bit more information about what it takes to grow a California pepper. I'm with Pete Beloyan of Beloyan Farms to talk about food safety. Pete, thanks for joining me. You bet. Pete, food safety, big buzzword today when it comes to making sure that the quality of food here in the United States is safe. You're in charge of it for this facility. Big duties. Yes, sir. What does it take to make sure that this is all taken care of? The first thing you have to do is watch from the field you're growing the food in all the way to the box that leaves here and goes to the consumer. So it, it really is supposed to be field to fork. So every step of the process, you look at what could go wrong and you find ways to prevent that or to fix it. And it's the things we don't think about. I mean, it's everything from water quality that you guys are testing on, um, making sure that, again, that fallow field, that field before you even put the plant in the ground, you're making sure that it's meeting the compliance standards. And this is a lot of paperwork to make sure this is all there, taken care of appropriately. There is an office full of binders, and there are a lot of miles on pickups watching it, tons of training. Every single person in the organization has to be on board with it. And today it's um, almost that additional step too because we talked about from the field to the packing house to the store, but it's also making sure that the consumer is educated and that they're properly taking care of that produce once it leaves the grocery shelf. That's right, yeah. <clears throat> uh, packaging is important, the instructions you put on there, uh, and just general consumer education about what they're eating and what they're buying, how to prepare it and how to handle it. Great, well thanks Pete so much for telling me a little bit more about how important it is to keep our food safe. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'm in Arvin talking chili peppers. With me I have Jim Roberts, the operations manager of Underwood Ranches. Jim, thanks for having me out. Nice to see you. Thanks for being out here. Thank you. Uh, well, let's begin with, I want to start with a little, what is Underwood Ranches? Underwood Ranches is a vegetable company in Somos, California, and we farm throughout Ventura and Los Angeles counties and in Kern County in the lower San Joaquin. So, and you guys are diversified growers? We are. We grow vegetables, and then our primary crop is chili peppers, which you see behind us here. <laughs> and that's what here I'm le to learn the secrets of what your chili peppers are here today. Right. Well, we can tell you what it can. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, as far as the uh, operation, how did you guys get involved in chili peppers? Well, I mean, the, the uh, Oxnard area produced a lot of different peppers over time, but in 1987, about the year I started working here, Craig and David Tran, the owners of the two companies, uh, got together and we did our first contract growing about 40 acres of jalapenos for who we found to make into a sriracha sauce. Sriracha sauce, okay, and we're, we're talking hot peppers here. Correct. And yeah. so you say jalapeno. Now let's, let's explain these varieties that we have behind us here. So basically we're dealing with jalapenos that have been crossed with other hot pepper varieties to give them both the jalapeno flavor and the characteristics of heat from some of the other chilies that, we, that are out there. Okay. So. 
And Jim, explain to me what exactly is sriracha sauce? Well, sriracha is a kind of salsa that originated in Thailand, a, a, a town in Thailand called sriracha, and, and it evolved from there. And that is a popular sauce throughout Asia, and it's come to the United States with uh, with David when he immigrated there from Vietnam to the United States. Okay, now so, let's talk about the peppers behind us here. What does it take to grow these? When do you put them in the ground, and how long is that growing season? Well, we start dropping seed for in the nursery in January, very early January, and we start transplanting the last week in March. Okay. And then we, that transplanting cycle lasts until about the, well, mid-June. Okay. And we start harvest then mid-July, and we finish harvest right before Thanksgiving. Oh, wow, so long season. Very long season. To get them to turn red and ripe and develop all the sugars, it's a long crop. And what, and what exactly do you have to worry about as far as, you know, pest and disease and sunburn? Is those issues with uh, peppers? It, everything. Peppers are a very, very sensitive crop. So, um, you know, we start with trying to make the ground as healthy as we can because they're subject to an enormous number of disease, root disease problems. And then we, uh, after that, then you have, you, you know, you have to manage all the regular insect pests that you might have on a crop that has that much sugar in it. Yeah. And then the fertility, which is, you know, to keep it in balance, we want to have it a healthy, strong plant, but we need to get, develop the sugars and the capsaicin, which can be offset by how you fertilize them. So. Oh, okay, okay. And now, Jim, you're in harvest season. We actually have the harvesters going behind us, and we get right. the opportunity to check them out. What exactly does it take to harvest these? you got a little bit of a specialty going on here. Right, well, for years and years, I mean, peppers have been picked in buckets by a hand crew, and, and we still do a portion of our crop that same way. Um, but over the last 10 years, we've developed machine harvesting that takes the crop. And uh, that started out with uh, tomato harvesters that that, uh, that harvested clods and juice. And, and after about three years, we developed them in our own shop and with our own guys into, into machines that actually were able to harvest the crop. And we're in our 10th year of that right now. So. And the process is, is the whole plant's then lifted up and goes through the machine and is separated? Correct, it's a destructive harvest. So much like cannery tomatoes would be done, but they, uh, the plant's taken and then and the peppers are removed from it. And that ripe pepper, what are you looking for to know, hey, it's harvest time? Well, we need bright red color. Okay. to make a nice red sauce. We need, we need sugars and we need heat. So one of the things we're doing all the time is looking for varieties. We do an enormous amount of variety selection, especially as the business has grown. We've had to expand it in different areas and we need different varieties for each of those areas. So we, we test uh, about 200 different varieties a year. Wow. And, and the varieties we grow are, most current varieties of jalapenos are sweet. <laughs> they, don't, they don't want hot peppers. Uh, for the market, they did only dumb down the capsaicin. We're looking for the exact opposite. So the breeders have this on the side. It's usually extra extra varieties that wouldn't work in the market, but are done for there. And a lot of salsas are actually produced with sweet peppers, and then they chemically add the capsaicin back into it to get the flavoring, so they can have a, a low, a medium, or a hot. And you can really taste that in there. It yeah. tastes like chili powder. Whereas this, you get actually a, a pepper flavor in it when you get them. And you talked about that. There's so many characteristics I didn't know you were looking for in a pepper, but let's talk about that hotness. I mean, it's not, is there a scale that you're trying to measure it on or just, well, and you told me you're, you're, you're the taste tester. You're out here testing these on a daily basis when it's time for the season to come around. Well, well what there is, is there's a, called Scoville units and that, that measures the heat of peppers, but it's, it's a little bit deceiving because it measures one number and we're actually looking for the entire heat across your whole palate from front <laughs> to back. And different, different species of peppers produce heat in different places in your mouth. So the, the jalapenos types would burn up front, the habanero types burn in the back. And so we're looking for a nice consistent burn. A nice consistent burn. And then as the plant breeders come oh. out, we check, we check the ones that look good as a plant, that might make it as a plant, then we check them, uh, taste them, to see if they're hot enough to make it as a salsa. And that's about a three to five year period of time it takes to test them. Got it. So. And then, um, and then you, once you get what you like, do you actually grow the seed on property here or do you get the seed from somewhere else? No, these are all hybrids. So the seed's generally produced in, in countries with very low labor because it's hand pollinated. So it would be produced in India or China, okay. or Chile, places like that, off season in Chile. Got it. So, so they actually use a paintbrush to pollinate these flowers. It's, not a, it's, a, it's a very labor intensive process. Really? Okay. Yeah. And Jim, can a pepper be too hot? Well, it can. I mean, we're really after flavor here as well as heat. So it's not just a matter of how hot it is. So there, there are peppers like the ghost pepper, which is enormously hot, or a habanero, which is hotter than what we have. But they don't have the right flavors to make a good sauce. So we're looking for a pepper that's hot, but not, uh, that's not the only factor we're after. We're after those other flavor components. And that's really done by, by first tasting them here in the field and then a taste panel in at Hui Fong, where they actually taste the different salsas and, and figure out whether it's good or bad or if they want to accept it or not. And that's one thing, that, that product, they're looking for consistency too. And Absolutely. So, and then you guys are the exclusive growers, so you're able to 
Well, it takes really? a lot. That's why it takes so much time to develop these yeah. varieties because you have to find varieties that always kind of have the same flavor profiles yeah. in different growing regions. Absolutely. So. Well, Jim, thank you so much for sharing this this great great story here because this is something I think everybody has seen on the supermarket shelves but didn't know the backstory to it. All right. So appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thanks, Thanks for being here. <laughs>
Fabian, thank you so much for showing me a little bit more about You're this welcome. wonderful cuisine that we have here that ties our local agricultural industry to the wonderful possibilities we have here on our plate. We so. appreciate it. Thank you. And I hope all of you will join me next time for more Valley's Gold. Valley's Gold is produced through a partnership between the Fresno County Farm Bureau and Valley PBS. Production funding for Valley's Gold is provided by... Everyone enjoys getting together to laugh, to talk, and mostly to eat. It sounds so simple, but the reality is that it takes a lot of hard work to feed us. The next time you sit down to eat, remember to thank our farmers Gar Tutelian Incorporated since 1949 at 800-696-6108. The Myers Water Bank and Wildlife Project, a water resource and education program, providing an educational experience that teaches students in the Central Valley about water and wildlife. For more than 60 years, Brandt has been a major supplier of agricultural specialty products. Formerly Monterey Ag Resources, Brandt provides sustainable solutions for both conventional and organic growers. Brandt, we're proud to call the Valley home.